हरे कृष्णा When Srila Prabhupada went to the West, and uh, when he introduced Nama Sankirtana, Hari Nama Sankirtana in the Western countries, he had carried with him the karta, the. Nama Sankirtana that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced usually had kartals, tala, brass kartal, and Prabhupada had carried that with him in the Jaladuta ship. And there was Mrudanga. In fact, uh, it is said that it was during Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's time that the Mrudanga was for the first time uh, created by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. It was actually the tabla, but both the end, the, the two ends of the tabla fused, and so there was, uh, they could wear it around their neck with a sling and then play on the drum for the kirtan. And uh, the Murudanga is obviously a very bulky one, and so Srila Prabhupada had not carried that. And so when Srila Prabhupada did the kirtans in the park in New York, he used to get a, the devotees had found, a single bongo drum and they would be playing on that, single head. I have some pictures of that one to show you. That you can see the picture of Srila Prabhupada playing on the drum. And uh, it is said in the Leelamruta, Prabhupada led the chanting and drummed with one hand on a small bongo. Even on this little bongo drum, he played Bengali Mridanga rhythms so interesting that a local Congo drummer used to come just to hear. So Prabhupada was very expert in playing the drums and uh, so uh, he would play on this uh, single bongo drum. I'll show another picture. You can see Prabhupada surrounded by so many young Western American boys and girls. They are looking around. And you can see to Srila Prabhupada's left on the ground, you can see the bongo drum. On the right side, you see a picture, a close up with Srila Prabhupada and the bongo drum lying on the ground. So that was the drum that Prabhupada used uh, to introduce Kirtan in Tompkins Square Park in the 26th Second Avenue Temple and later on in the Frederick Street, San Francisco Temple. There's one more picture I would like to share. On the left side, the picture on the left side, you can see uh, two young American students. They are chanting and dancing while there are many other onlookers. And you can see Srila Prabhupada holding the bongo drum and playing. On on the right side, there is a close-up of Srila Prabhupada and you can closely see the bongo drum. So this is how Srila Prabhupada introduced kirtans, chanting of the holy name congregationally and publicly in, in America. And uh, because there was no mrutanga. And uh, this was the last one. Next. <clears throat> and then... Uh, Srila Prabhupada kept writing to some of his contacts in India to get a Mrudanga and send that over to America. Uh, he was talking to one Brahmachari from the Gaudiya Mart and he was talking to a Narayan Maharaj also to help him send the Mrudanga and he was, and he was making arrangements with the uh, 
with the people in the Sindhya shipping company. So they would ship it because Prabhupada was not having much money. And so he was waiting for all these kind of favors to be to ship the Mridanga to uh, all the way to America. And so finally, Mridanga, two Mridangas and a few Kartals came to New York. And then Prabhupada had one Mridanga and a few Kartals sent over to San Francisco. So how that all happened is a very interesting story. The mantra rock dance had happened and more number of peoples were coming to the temple on Frederick Street in San Francisco. In fact, the morning program, there would be so many people. Initially, when Prabhupada first arrived, there were only six and a, a few more handful of yeah, uh, enthusiasts or can't say followers. They were just eager to know, interested to know what Swamiji is doing in Haight-Ashbury. And so they were interested to come and participate. And uh, now after the mantra rock dance, the morning hall would be filled. And especially in the evening programs, which would start at about eight o'clock and go on till 11 o'clock in the night, the temple hall would be packed with people. There was no place at all for more people to come in. It, it was like that. And a lot of people were seriously taking to Krishna consciousness and Prabhupada was spending his time with them and more initiations were happening, more devotees were getting initiated and all of that, these kind of things were happening. But they were all getting initiated, but not always they were serious about their commitments. And uh, sometimes Srila Prabhupada, his apartment was on the uh, fourth floor. They call it fourth floor in America, but we would say it is third floor, ground plus third floor. So Prabhupada's apartment was on the third floor, speaking from Indian convention. And he had a window in his apartment. And when he looks out of the window, he would see the front of the temple. And many times when Prabhupada was walking up and down in his apartment chanting, he would look down through the window and sometimes he would see some of his newly initiated disciples still smoking. And Srila Prabhupada was very saddened by that. And uh, later on, there was an occasion where Srila Prabhupada said, when he saw such things, he was praying to Krishna that they get freed from all these habits so that the peace and happiness of Krishna consciousness, like Krishna conscious life, will become firmly established in their hearts. So this was the compassion of Srila Prabhupada when he saw his young uh, followers, Western American followers, and they were struggling. For them, the very difficult thing was intoxication and to give up illicit sex. These were very difficult things for them and they were struggling with. And so Prabhupada said that he was praying to Krishna that they become freed from these habits. So one day, <clears throat> Mukunda was in a, just across the temple in a donut shop, eating his chocolate sugary donut. And uh, suddenly one big delivery truck came by and the driver asked Mukunda, do you know where is the Hare Krishna temple? And Mukunda showed the opposite, the temple, and he said, it's just there. And uh, so the drive, delivery truck moved a little further and stopped there. And he got off and he went to the uh, Hare Krishna temple there. And one devotee, Murari, a new devotee who had been initiated recently, he came and he signed and he took delivery of a big box. And uh, Mukunda was sitting in the in the donut shop and he was also picked oh, what something has come and so he left the things there and ran across the street and uh, Murari was trying to figure out what that what was there in the box and both of them started trying to open it and then it was a 
big wooden box and then they could see some Hindi writing. So they knew it has come from India and they priced it open and they found inside there was the Mridanga and they carefully carried it inside and a few more devotees came in, Janaki came in and they lifted it off the box. It was carefully packed. There was a lot of uh, Hindi newspapers packing it, you know, as packing, that's what we do in, in our country, right? So the packing material, we use all the old newspapers and so it was packed probably somewhere in Mathura, Vrindavan. <clears throat> and this had traveled all the way from India and come to New York and from New York to San Francisco. And uh, so they had the, this, they lifted this murdanga and then uh, uh, they were, uh, Janaki said, she always said the right things. She said, maybe we should go and tell Swami that this has arrived. And uh, so yes, they thought, yes, we should. And then maybe he should play fast. You see something, she said the right things. And so Mukunda and Janaki ran up, took the elevator to the third floor and knocked on the door. And Swami said, come in. And he opened the door and went inside and told Swami that the Mridanga has arrived. Prabhupada, Prabhupada's eyes widened. He said, oh, where is it? And they said, it's in the temple hall, Swamiji. And so, oh, is that so? I'll come there to see. And so Prabhupada was getting ready to come. And so Janaki and Mukunda decided that they'll quickly take the elevator, go to the temple hall and be ready to receive Swamiji and show him the Mridanga. And so they took the elevator and came down. But as they came down, they saw already Swamiji had come down, rushing down the stairs. And he was ahead of them. And he went to the temple hall and Janaki and Mukunda say, hey, he's already up there around. And they quickly moved on and, and showed them Radanga. And Prabhupada was so happy to see them Radanga. He picked up them Radanga. He sat on the ledge and then he was examining it carefully. And then he said, all my life I have been playing this instrument. And uh, he said, my father gave me this instrument and I would play day after day after day and I would be so happy playing this drum. And uh, <clears throat> it was actually my mother who would force me to go to school. If uh, my mother had not forced me to go to school, I would have just kept playing the Mridanga. And uh, so Prabhupada looked at it carefully and then he said that this is made of clay and so it can get damaged very easily. And so you have to be careful about maintaining it. And then he said, uh, get me a glass of water. And Janaki went to the kitchen and brought a small glass of water. Prabhupada carefully dipped his finger, turned them Rodanga, and on one of the heads, he started applying the water along the edge. And he said, you should, now and then water the edge like this and uh, this is the way you should maintain the mridanga basically so that it is kept wet and so it does not crack so that was part of the maintenance and Prabhupada was showing them and then Prabhupada had a cloth around him and then he tore that cloth he took it off and he tore that cloth and tied it around the mridanga and he said that this cloth should never be removed it should always be there around the mridanga and then he played a little bit, a few beats, and then, he, and then he was very carefully, intently hearing that, and then he said, very good. And then he kept the Murudanga down, and then uh, he went back, and then he gave them a few instructions that it should be kept safely, and so on, and he went back to, the, to his apartment. Mukunda, uh, seeing, uh, Mukunda was a musician, he was a composer. But he was a piano composer, not so much of the percussions. So he was uh, interested to learn. So he again went up to the apartment and then he asked Swamiji, Swamiji, can I learn uh, to play Mrudanga? And uh, Swamiji said, yes, of course. When do you want to learn? 
And then uh, Mukunda said, can I learn now? Yes, why not? Go and bring them Rudanta. And so Prabhupada was so happy. And he came down, picked up the Murudanga, went up to the temple, uh, to the apartment. <clears throat> and uh, uh, Prabhupada made him sit on the floor. And then he told him how to play. And then he said, there are some mantras. And you must uh, play according to this mantra. And then he taught him, Gita, ta, Gita. And then so he asked, how can the mantra and this drum, yes, you will learn how to do. And then he showed him. And then he told him you sh he should keep repeating and keep playing on the drum. And so he kept teaching him. And then he would do it very fast. No, no, not so fast, slowly. And then he corrected him a few things. And then he started telling him to play. And Mukunda was focusing on the beats and he was playing. And then he and Swamiji was standing right next to him. And so he kept playing, playing, playing a few minutes, maybe five minutes went, 10 minutes passed. Mukunda was still closing his eyes. So he was wondering, Mukunda was wondering whether Swamiji is still there or he has gone back to do his work. So, but he didn't know what to do. And then he slowly opened his eyes a little bit and he saw the lotus feet of Swamiji was still there. And so he kept playing again. And then after a little while, once again, he saw Swamiji's lotus feet was there. And then he slowly looked up and Swamiji had, was closing his eyes and he was rocking his head and there was a kind of a smile on his face because Mukunda had learned how to play the Rudanga quite well, the first few steps. And he was so happy that he had taught Mukunda and Mukunda being a musician, he had learned music from many teachers. One thing he, it's, that struck him was Swamiji is such a wonderful teacher. He wants to teach and when his student learns, he is truly happy about that. And so Prabhupada was rocking his head, smiling happily, enjoying that now my student has learned this. This was a very, very powerful thing that uh, um, stuck in the, in the mind of Mukunda. So, uh, and that's how Prabhupada taught the first Mridanga lessons to his followers in America. And uh, so in a few, next few days, Mridanga became the standard accompaniment in the morning and evening kirtans. And Prabhupada would sit on his Vyasasan and he would play very wonderfully and everyone was, now it was a new, interesting feature of the kirtan. And uh, these kirtans would go on for about 60 minutes, 70 minutes, 80 minutes, like that. And devotees would be singing, chanting, and some of them dancing. And now the mrutanga became mrutanga, kartha. And some of them used to bring other instruments also. <clears throat> so one day, someone came to the temple and uh, gave a donation of a harmonium they got from an import store. And they thought that maybe this uh, Indian instrument may be good for these people. And someone came and donated, left it off in the temple. And so Swamiji heard about that. And then uh, Mukunda took the harmonium and he asked Swamiji, can you teach me harmonium? And Prabhupada said, yes, of course. When do you want to learn? Can I learn now? Yes, bring it, bring the harmonium. <laughs> so, uh, Mukunda again carried the harmonium. It was a big mrudan, big harmonium. He carried up and then Prabhupada taught him how to. Then he taught him a new mantra. He said, Govinda Jaya Jaya Gopala Jaya Jaya Radha Ramana Hari Govinda Jaya Jaya. And he taught him and then he played how to, showed him how to play. And Mukunda being a you know, harmonium, uh, sorry, piano player, very quick, quickly picked up the thing and in a short while and he could also play. And uh, so this is how the uh, first uh, Mridanga and the first harmonium and all of these teaching was happening here in the San Francisco temple. <clears throat> and uh, around this time, more and more young people were uh, coming and they were getting serious, getting initiated, more devotees were initiated. But all along, 
Janaki's sister, who later on became Yamuna, she had not yet taken her initiation. So she was uh, in a kind of a certain uncertainty whether I should take or will I be able to maintain the principles, follow the regulated principles strictly because when the, she loved Kirtans and when Kirtans were there, there were many occasions where she would sing, close her eyes and sing when Swamiji was leading. And there were occasions where there would be tears in her eyes. But when she tried to read uh, or when she tried to hear Prabhupada's lectures, she would often fall asleep. So she was in a, she was in a dilemma. Whether am I serious enough? Will I take to Krishna consciousness? Will I take the vows of initiation seriously? But she was trying to follow as much as possible. In fact, when she had the Srimad Bhagavatam in her hand, uh, Swamiji had told, these were some of the things that Swamiji had told, they must chant, they must read his books daily, and they must follow the regulated principles strictly. So she was trying to, and then she recalls that she would keep the Bhagavatam and before reading the Bhagavatam, she would pray to Krishna, please Krishna, help me understand what is in this book. You know, just look at this. The impact Srila Prabhupada had created. Here is a 25-year-old young American girl. Look at the seriousness and, and devotion Srila Prabhupada had inspired in her, uh, wanting to follow carefully, holding a Bhagavatam in her hand and praying to Krishna, hope I'll be able to understand what is in this book, the knowledge in this book. Bring, some, bring an American to that level of seriousness. And this is not one, just one. Srila Prabhupada brought hundreds and thousands of them from all over the world. So uh, Yamuna was still in this kind of a dilemma. And one day uh, Srila Prabhupada asked her, when are you going to get initiated? And so she was, she had to suddenly answer that to Swamiji. And she said, uh, I'm not very certain, uh, Swamiji. And uh, I've been thinking, maybe I should go to Tibet and uh, see the tall hills, mountains, and uh, experience some kind of an elevated consciousness. And when she said that, Srila Prabhupada looked at her very intently. There was a long silence. And then he said, I can take you to a level even higher than the Tibet. Just see, just see. And so that sort of struck her that yes, actually, if I strictly follow what Swamiji is saying, Krishna consciousness is so elevated and it can take us higher than whatever uh, Tibetan or Buddhist meditation can teach. And uh, so like this, there was, Yamuna was becoming more serious with these interactions. She found that actually Prabhupada's personality created a very profound impact on her. And she saw that he was living the philosophy of Krishna consciousness. He was a living example of the principles that he was teaching. A wonderful teacher, not, who, not somebody who just taught by precepts, taught by his own personal practice. So she had seen all of those kind of features in Srila Prabhupada and she was gradually becoming more and more serious. <clears throat> Around this time, Mukunda and Janaki, actually their house was also in the same apartment building in another floor. And so they lived there and Prabhupada lived on the third floor and the temple was on the ground floor and that's how, and there were many others who were coming and going. This is the kind of a situation that was there. And uh, <clears throat> Janaki had a black cat 
And that cat would invariably follow them and come into Swamiji's room. And um, it had found somehow a favorite spot in the, in the bathroom under the bathing tub. So this cat would always go and sit there. And uh, whenever Swamiji had to go to the bathroom, he would come inside and he would tell someone that the cat is inside. And so they had to come and pick the cat out, bring it out, and then Swamiji would go and use the washroom. So this became a standard thing and every time the cat would be there and he would get the cat removed and then he would go in. So sometimes it so happened that there was nobody in the, around and cat was inside. And so Prabhupada had to bathe there and so there was a bathing tub but the bathing tub had no shower. So he had a, he had a lota, what is called in Bengali a lota, it's actually a cup for uh, having bath. So Prabhupada would have a cup and that lota and he would take his bath. And, uh, and invariably, you know, when you have a bathing tub like that, uh, there was no curtains and all of those kind of things. And there would be a lot of water all, all on the floor after the thing. And uh, this cat would come out and uh, the cat was somehow a little funny about the water. The cat would touch the water with its paw and immediately withdraw its, uh, its uh, uh, leg. Uh, so Prabhupada had seen that one and then sometimes and then it would touch the water and as if touching water and making having a wet paw was the most difficult thing. It would shake off the water and take back withdraw. You know all these kind of things Prabhupada had seen. So Prabhupada sometimes when he took bath he would pour a little extra water on the floor just to annoy the cat. And, and so this kind of a thing was going on between Srila Prabhupada and this uh, black cat. And uh, Prabhupada had a rocking chair in the hallway. And um, that's where Prabhupada would sit and there would be his young followers sitting around him. And he would be discussing seriously Krishna conscious philosophy. One day Prabhupada was sitting on the rocking chair and uh, Yamuna, Janaki and a few other young men, they were all sitting around and they were talking philosophy seriously and asking questions and Prabhupada was speaking. So slowly this black cat came out of the bathroom, walked through the hallway, came in the midst of the devotees and everyone was watching and Prabhupada is speaking something seriously. What's this cat going to do? And the cat walked straight and sat in front of Srila Prabhupada, looked at him and Prabhupada was speaking still and then looked at him and said meow and Prabhupada stopped, looked at the cat and slowly he lifted his lotus foot and gently stroked the cat and all the devotees were silent and they were watching and he stroked and then he said, is the cat getting Krishna Prasadam, a milk? And then he asked and he kept stroking and he was saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, he was making. And so all of them were, actually Yamuna says, this was one of the things that, one of the many things that actually touched their hearts. Swamiji is so kind. Even to an insignificant cat, he's concerned about the cat's spiritual development. He's making, he's making the cat hear Hare Krishna and he wants to see that the cat gets Krishna Prasadam and he was gently stroking. What a fortunate cat to get the dust of the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. <clears throat> and uh, so like this, these were some of the interactions that were happening between the devotees uh, in San Francisco. There was another humorous thing that happened. <clears throat> devotees, you know, didn't have much money. So uh, they had a, a car, which was an old rickety wreck of a car. And that was the temple's car. It was a 1952 model. Now we are talking about 67. So it's quite an old car, 15 year old car. and. Uh, uh, actually devotees knew it was, it was called the Krishna car because devotees all knew that 
this car was running simply by the supreme mercy of the Lord. So, because otherwise it was such an old, rickety, ugly car. And they would take Srila Prabhupada in that car many times. He would, they would drive him to the Golden Gate Park and he would have his walk there and to a few other places. And, and the car had a seat and the seat, you know, was not normal. And then it had unusually 45 degree inclination. And Swamiji usually would sit, you know, so they had noticed that Prabhupada was very aristocratic in his movements. And he carried himself a certain amount of dignity. You know, that was wonderful thing about Srila Prabhupada. And he always held his head high and his chin was up in the air like that. And so Prabhupada had to sit in this car and his head, back would go back and his chin would, was up in the air like that. And uh, so they would take him to many places in that car and Prabhupada never complained. He just tolerated whatever was there, whatever devotees were offering, whatever Krishna was offering. He never complained. So these were all devotees were watching all these things and they were, they were very touched by the wonderful personal qualities of Srila Prabhupada. And then at a certain point, Yamuna decides that, yes, I must take initiation from Swamiji. And uh, she makes up her mind. And uh, she has one uh, friend whom she had actually found in San Francisco itself. She was doing distributing flyers uh, before Swamiji arrived, uh, inviting people to come and receive him and come to the temple. So she had actually given to one young uh, New Yorker and he had taken it quite seriously and then he started coming to the temple and got to know Yamuna and they became good friends. And uh, they were even contemplating whether they should marry, but they were not too sure, uh, Yamuna and this uh, Jim. And uh, so uh, he, he was more keen on getting married by the Swami. Then Yamuna said, no, he has not come here to marry us. He has come here to initiate. His primary interest is to make us devotees. And if we are ready to get initiated, if we get initiated, then we can ask him to get married. So finally they had some, some thinking about this whole thing and both of them made up their mind and there was an initiation ceremony and she became Yamuna Devi Dasi and Jim became Guru Das. And the very next day, Swamiji said, we should have your marriage. And so the marriage was arranged the next day. And they all uh, once again got together. And uh, uh, the uh, yagna marriage, fire sacrifice was to be performed. And those days, uh, they could not, you know, in, in Indian culture, for a fire sacrifice, you have to use a specific kind of a wood called samit. Samit, it's a kind of a tree and you should use Samit wood. And obviously in America you don't get Samit and uh, at least those days they could not have access to. So they would get some uh, crates, orange crates, you know wooden crates and they would break that and make it into, chop it off and to make wood. And so Prabhupada sat there, Yamuna and his newly initiated disciples Yamuna and Guru Das were seated there. And then uh, Prabhupada had a candle to light the sacrifice, the sacrificial fire. And then he took a small piece of wood and he uh, touched the flame in the candle and it caught fire, the wood caught fire and in a few seconds it went off. So Prabhupada took a bigger piece of wood and again tried to light that one to light the fire and as he went towards the small pile of wood in the sacrificial, in the yagna kunda, again t -t -t it went off. So he took a third time, fourth time, fifth time and every time it would go off. Then he took the last time and then he looked at them and he said, it looks like this marriage is going to have a slow start. And they were all wondering what does that mean? Of course Prabhupada said it in a 
in a in a in a humorous way and then he set the fire and the fire yagna happened and they got married <clears throat> so uh, in this way yamuna also became uh, serious <clears throat> one day mukunda was uh, Actually, he was rushing to go and meet Swamiji for something. One yellow taxi cab came uh, in front of the temple and the taxi driver was still inside. He said, hey guys, I summoned there. And so Mukunda looked at him and he said, yes, what do you want? And then the taxi driver asked, do you have those uh, Back to Godhead magazines? You know, I have a few of them in my, t in my taxi and I, my riders uh, read that and I have run out of the magazines. Do you have a few of them? So Mukunda said, okay, hold on. And so he went inside, got a bunch of a dozen uh, back to God at Mac. This, those were very simple uh, printing those days in New York. It was getting printed and devotees would be distributing. So he got those magazines and he gave up about 10 of them and uh, asked him, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then uh, he said that, you know, I, I drive around people and then people like to read and, and you and I read the magazine sometimes. And then he took the magazines and he drove off and Mukunda went about with his work. About three days later, once again, the, drive, the, the car driver, the, the taxi driver came and he came into the temple and then he asked, uh, he met Mukunda again and Mukunda asked, do you want more magazines? He said, yeah, you know, and then, uh, <clears throat> and then he said, uh, what do you guys do here? I was just inquisitive, I was just curious to know what you, you guys do here. And so Mukunda said, uh, we do a lot of chanting. Oh, really, chant what? And then they start talking to him and then uh, he said, do you want to meet uh, Swami Bhaktivedanta? Oh, you mean the Bhaktivedanta Swami? I re I've read something about him in that magazine. Yes. Do you want to meet him? Oh, you mean I can meet him? Oh, yes, of course you can meet him. I'll take him, take you to him. So Mukunda said, okay. And then he took him up to the uh, third, third floor apartment. And there he met Swamiji and Swamiji would meet young people like that and spend a lot of time talking about Krishna, convincing them about Krishna consciousness. And the next few days, this taxi driver kept coming, cab driver kept, kept coming again and again and again. After one week, he was so convinced, he decided to move into the temple. And he became very serious, started chanting. He would go drive, do his driving for so many hours and come back and also be with the devotees, hearing Prabhupada's lectures, chanting. He became very serious. And uh, he started giving his entire salary paycheck to the temple. In fact, this became the uh, steady income for the temple. And then gradually he started taking responsibilities to see that the temple is clean and people are coming, the instruments and, the, you know, and to see that the temple programs happen very nicely. And in the next initiation ceremony, he became initiated as Jayananda Das. And this devotee Jayananda Das did a lot of service in that temple and in a few weeks he became the temple president of San Francisco. And after that, he was involved in many more wonderful services in the temple. So in this way, Srila Prabhupada was meeting young Americans, spending a lot of time convincing them about Krishna consciousness, answering their doubts, inspiring them to chant Hare Krishna and speaking and they and these young followers hearing Prabhupada chanting Hare Krishna with them and interacting with Srila Prabhupada becoming very convinced that 
Prabhupada is saying this, Swamiji is saying this, it must be true. And they started becoming more and more dedicated. In this way, the Krishna consciousness movement began to spread. And this devotee Jayananda, he did many more wonderful services. We will talk about that further. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.